All right, well, I decided it was time to try to do this most difficult to, uh, to uh, I'll say it's the most difficult one to teach, so I'll blame it on myself, but it is a difficult one to get uh, a sort of a, an understanding of and learning how to use it. But, uh, you know, me, I'm a great breathing fanatic. I teach everybody to breathe all the time. And I insist that everybody breathe deeply and breathe a certain way. And now is the time to, to, to reveal the great secret that we breathe in order that the voice will sound better because the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. But you don't necessarily need to breathe all the time when you sing, funnily enough. And I wish I would try to demonstrate. We have the breath stop method where we stop something before we sing. So if I exhale and do what's called a valsalva maneuver, which means I stop the exhalation by closing my throat, I do this. The mother maneuver, I close my throat suddenly with my, I mean, I'm, yeah, by, by, by actually closing my, my vocal cords together, I stop the inhalation. So I'm going to inhale and go. Now, you might call that a, a modern uh, necessity. As the opera started to change the way they were writing them and you had blood and guts on the stage and all kinds of much more e emotion and individual human beings suffering instead of gods and angels and, and whatever, uh, the opera began to change that people needed something uh, to give them more, uh, more various ways of expressing emotions and ideas and uh, the, the one I'd like to teach today is the so-called bel canto emission. And the way you do it is by not stopping the breath as such. I don't go or, and stop the breath. What I do is I stop breathing. I go That is so simple that we should be able to stop here. But what really happens is it becomes the most difficult one to uh, teach and probably the most difficult one to execute in its purest form, which is no interference with the throat or the glottis or the vocal cords or anything. You are literally not stopping the breath. You are stopping breathing. You're stopping the respiratory process. I'm going to breathe in. Now I stopped breathing. Imagine I have a camera and the camera breaks or the film breaks and I'm just, I'm caught right in the middle of getting ready to do one of my, my uh, uh, Valsal maneuvers. I'm, I was going to do this. Instead I get caught in the middle. Oh, well that was bad because I put a color. I've trained myself uh, if I'm going to do this not to make any cutoffs. So I go. Now you hear there's no at the end of that one. So if I go, even a small one, it's still a breath stop and therefore not the pure bel canto style. So we do the bel canto style would be to not use the throat for anything. The first rule of bel canto was no throat, no tongue, and no jaw, period. Uh, Dame Ava Turner called them all invisible, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to try to exhale, but instead of stopping the exhalation with some action somewhere, usually in the throat, I'm going to just stop exhaling. I'm going to stop breathing. So here we go. Ready? See, it's like I'm frozen. It's like the film suddenly stopped. No. If I do that on the inhalation, the camera stops, the film suddenly feels like it's broken, and I'm just going to absolutely stop breathing right in the middle of my inhalation, but not with the cutoff. I'm just going to stop the respiratory process. I'm going to go... Wow. 
what I did was I stopped the inhalation by stopping breathing. Very strange, very odd. This has several wonderful uh, possibilities. If you do that, it is the most spontaneous, or can be the most spontaneous of all the breathing techniques. Any technique that requires a stop in front of it uh, requires a moment. They, they work. If I go, the hiccup, all of these work. But the one that I would really like to master is the one where I don't have to do anything. And I can be spontaneous because my breath is, my breathing has stopped. Now, one of you guys was in before my beard grew out again, and this all got confused with one of the old beard tapes. Somebody, somebody wrote in and said, I can tell where you are in, in, in the progress of your videos because you, I can time you by your beard. <laughs> well, anyway, you can see I started it again. I, once while I get tired of it, and somebody else gets tired of it. I won't call any names. And then we cut it off, and then eh, that shaving and clipping, no, not for me. So this is just about what we've already done. I'm going to look at my timer. It's been six minutes and 50 seconds. And we've ba basically got, the, we've got it covered. We've got what you either understand a difference between a breath stop and stopping breathing. A breath stop means the breath is flowing and I stop it somehow. And I really, the most common one is you stop it here, but you can do it, there's the, there's the uh, pre-cough. You put pressure of the breath against your chest before you cough. <coughs> well, instead of letting it cough, I go, <laughs> so that's a breath stop because I'm using pressure of the breath from my back against my chest. Somebody said, oh, I like that one the best. Fine, fine. What I'm really trying to discuss here is different possibilities, different styles, and uh, uh, we have to know a lot if you're going to be a, a, any kind of leading singer and not get exhausted sometimes. Some of these big monster operas, you really have to know what to do and uh, what not to do. So I can also uh, put that pressure against my back. Like Chris Ludwig always uh, always did her breath stop between her shoulder blades. So I go, well, that works fine, like a charm. She sang whatever, 60 years. She only had a confusion between mezzo and soprano. So she did both. <laughs> right? So if I do that, uh, I'm a little bit confused about am I a lyric tenor or a lyrical spinto or a spinto, and of course everybody has an opinion, right? But if I do that between my shoulder blades, you go and put a stop on it. Well, that sounds all right. Uh, what about trying to sing something more lyric? That sounds okay. If I really want to work at it, I weren't 85 years old. Who knows what I could do? But anyway. So the main thing to understand today, if you're interested, if you're interested in bel canto music or the bel canto style, or just pure survival and avoiding getting tired, because some of these operas that I did were five hours long, and uh, some of them were, were really, really tough, and I had great singers, someone's like Placido Domingo and uh, Giacomini and Adagal, these fabulous tenors, and they were all losing their voices halfway through Don Carlo. And you realize that Don Carlos is a hysterical character. He's in love with the girl who now the king has decided to marry. So the, the king is his father. So now if the girl marries his love, his fiance, if she marries the king, he has to call this girl mother. They might call his father a mother too, but that's a different kind of mother. Anyway, the whole idea is you must be able to adjust to whatever the music requires and some techniques are very basic and will let you be happy, sad, or angry. So what if I do uh, one of these uh, uh, stop the inhalation process techniques and uh, I go, it stopped, now I'll be happy. 
Why not just do that? Then I'm sad, or I'm, I'm sort of in between. I can't decide. One minute I'm happy, one minute I'm sad, right? So if I do an exhalation, and I do it with this strange emotional state, I go, Non generai per me non va di letto. What do I do there? So I can do some of these big, fantastic operas, um, and you can do them on what we used to call innies or outies, an inhalation stop or an exhalation stop. But they are not breath stops, they are breathing stops. We've got to get this very clear. The absolutely action of your respiration when you're breathing in is stopped, or when you're exhaling is stopped. You don't take some air and stop it somewhere like, uh, there. You can hear me stopping the breath there. Well, that, those work. You can sing that way. So I build up pressure someplace, and I stop the pressure there, and I use it. I use a location method to control my breath. But if I do this bel canto style singing, you have to. Admit, I studied with my teacher sixty-five years ago. She studied with her teacher. What? Uh, before I mean, she spent, you know, the, uh, I don't know, at least at least fifty years before she was only sixteen when she went to conservatory. She studied with her for almost I don't know how how long, five six years. That's a long time ago, nineteen twelve. You got to figure it out. Then her teacher studied with somebody for fifty years. So this stuff goes back a couple of hundred years that I'm showing you today. If you if you're interested, if anybody's interested, um, most of we just want to be secure and get all the notes. But there are ways to do it, and the ways to survive and get through a big difficult piece. And you may have to change the character a little bit instead of being hysterical like Don Carlo is. He's like that all night long, and he's above the staff all night. Forty nine B flats and nine B naturals, and about a thousand A's and G sharps, and they're all hysterical. Well, the heck with that. I'm sorry, Mr. Verity and everybody else concerned, but I've got to survive and get through the dadgum thing. And I've seen really wonderful singers not get through it. And the best I ever heard was UC Burley. You just sang it like it was just, just an opportunity to just sound gorgeous, right? Well, I've got tapes of the performances. I did get through it, but I compromised the character. I didn't play him so hysterical. I played him more of a pity pot. He feels sorry for himself. He goes, which is not as strenuous as when you do that one all night from it's in the French version, the version I did mostly, I did the Italian version, which was about four hours long, but the French version was five hours and 15 or 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, let's face it, you have to make sure you don't get tired. My problem was always be careful. I, I, I didn't really start doing serious singing until I was 19. I wasn't playing a, a you know, a, a saxophone. Uh, before that, I was playing a tuba. And the tuba goes... <laughs> you never sustain. It says... <laughs> you hardly ever sustain a note, with, especially the marching sousaphone, right? Which was a big tuba for marching with that great big bell and thing over your shoulder. 22 pounds of weight on my shoulder and I have to march 20 miles of that thing. I mean, like <laughs> at the end of the thing. But I still got my <laughs> end. And then when I was in the army, I played the bugle. And the bugle is played by sustaining, but you do everything with your lips. You change pitch with your lips. No valves, right? Uh, so anyway, a lot of kids started playing saxophone. Like Jeannie started play, playing saxophone when he was a little boy, and he played it for 30 years. Fritz Wunder has played French horn for 30 years. These guys were really great. Caruso was a, was a free diver. He was free diving as a child, going down to six feet of water to get coins. And as he got older, he got stronger and, and braver, and he went out and he finally ended up diving to the Bay of Naples to the bottom, which is about 30 meters, which is, what, 95 feet or something like that. And you go around there, and they, he, they look and go through all the wrecks and find old relics and sell them to the, to the uh, uh, antique dealers. And, uh, you know, make money that way. But, you know, he was, he was unique, really, in his breath. The development, the, the, everyone that ever heard him and ever saw him and knew anything about him said it. No one ever developed their breathing the way he did. His, he had the best breathing system and most incredible excess energy and power all the time, more than anyone else. Anyway, the best uh, male singer I ever heard was, 
was think of, was uh, Richard uh, U. C. Burling, and the best uh, female I ever heard was Zinka Milanoff. And I've heard a lot of great singers. I'm telling you, I, uh, he also Fritz Wunderlich was a great singer. Make no mistake. Uh, he died at what age 36 or something. It was just a pity. And Jonas Kalpin stepped in as a great Mozart tenor and then started singing heavier music and sort of lost it. The Stefano lost it. Those guys all, all started blowing harder and giving more air to sing bigger. And you're not supposed to do that. If you don't have the strength to stop your inhaling or your exhaling, then you shouldn't sing the music. They're always offering me things like Tannhäuser and, and, and Tristan and, and Isolde and, and Siegfried. And I, you know, I learned them with piano, and it wasn't that big a deal. They were, they were, you know, they were difficult. It took a lot of thought to be able to sing them safely and well, but but I could certainly get through them. And then I went to hear performances and listened to it, and uh, couldn't hear the tenor. The orchestra is unbelievable, massive oceans of sound. So I said, well, then uh, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm, forget that whole. But I sang all the other, I sang Prize of and Meister Singer and Flying Dutchman, and you know, I sang the. The ones that uh, that that uh, 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 that now uh, now it's Melchior called the easy ones. You can sing the easy ones. I will sing the difficult ones. Do not sing those difficult ones. They are too low, and you must give must so much voice in the middle voice in the middle register. You must give so much voice. I have that because I was a body tone. So you do not have that because you're a lyric tenor. It's a big one. You have what they used to call lyrico forte, a strong lyric, but still, you're a lyric voice, not heroic voice. So anyway, if I, if I decide that I'm going to just use my inhale, exhale, and just stop inhaling and exhaling, whatever I want to, I go, that was an exhale, with, with, but I stopped breathing. I stopped breathing and started singing. That's what it amounts to. Everybody says, oh, you've got to breathe. Yeah, I'd do this for the, for the throat doctor or the, or, the, or the pulmonologist. I'd go to discuss all this stuff with these, with these doctors, all that. And they'd say, no, what kind of circus trick is that? What are you doing? That's not possible. He said, what are you thinking about when you're singing? I said, well, I learned from Gottlob Frick. Uh, when I asked him in the most famous bass in Germany when I was over there. He was a fabulous voice. Big as a barn, huge voice, and he got all the low notes. He was a, he was a basso profondo, really. And I said, "What do you think about when you sing?" He said, "Well, I sing like my colleague Fritz Wunderlich." I said, "Fritz Wunderlich is a high Mozart tenor, high lyric tenor, and and you're the world's biggest basso profondo. What do you what do you talking about? What do you have in common with a high voice like that?" He said, "Well, we both try to sing underwater and not make any bubbles." So I told the doctor that, and the doctor went, Singers! Singers! You're gonna drive me crazy! Singers! I said, now, doc, come on, let's get them straight. I've been bringing you to students and people that come to me from the, the McCloskey Institute in Boston used to send me people that had nodules and all kinds of stuff and ruptured vocal cords and God knows what, burst capillaries and things. Oh, it's all breath. Only thing that goes through here is breath. So if you can control your breath, you don't damage your voice. I'm 85, I still sing all day. I've sung all day today, as a matter of fact. But the idea was that if you, uh, I've forgotten where I was, and we were talking about, oh, you know, Melchior and all this stuff, and, and, and what do we do when we want to sing and we need, let's say, more power? What do I do if I got to sing bigger, more dramatic music? Well, think about it. Why can't I exhale stronger or you know, stronger? If I do that, but I do have my limitations and I never had enough voice to be able to sing Siegfried, or Tristan or Tannhäuser safely without putting my voice in jeopardy. So I didn't do it. So I'd go. So then we have a limitation. Uh, if you breathe a lot over many, many years, uh, you do get the ability to sing more. So I could certainly sing a lot of those big spindle parts, the lyrical spindle parts, but in Germany they call Jugendlicher Held, youthful hero parts. But the main thing to understand is you do it without a breath stop, which means the only stop you have available to you is to stop exhaling or stop inhaling. Here's my stop. It's like, it's like the camera froze. And I go... I didn't breathe. 
As a matter of fact, I stopped breathing. If I've developed my breath capacity enough, I can sing a lot without having to actually inhale and replenish my supply of air. Also, I can go, I can stop an exhalation and stop an inhalation on the next note, stop an exhalation on the next note, if, uh, if I if I'm, uh, know how to do this. I can sing, I don't have perfect pitch, guys. I would admit, I, you sing the wrong notes most of the time. But I've got suits that have perfect pitch, and they usually clue me in if I start too far. Oh, they just come in on the right note. But if I'm doing, let's see, let me let me check. I'll check the pitch on that one. Oh, it's way too high. What? In other words, the idea is that that I can be spontaneous. I can be spontaneous. If I need to. You've got that in uh, Flying Dutchman. There are a lot of places where, uh, especially the Jugendliche Held, the youthful hero type tenor in the German repertoire, has to suddenly come in on a high note. Bacchus has that in, uh, in uh, Ariane Athnoxus, comes in on B flats over and over. And, uh, after a while, if you learn how to do this, you'll get so it doesn't matter to you what note you're singing because you're going to stop your inhaling or exhaling anyway. So if I'm going, you notice there's no huh, at the end of that. No, not enough. Here we go. No, no. So one is out, out, uh, one is exhaling, and I stop it. One is inhaling, and I stop it. So you, let me ask some questions on that one. And uh, as I, I warned you in the beginning, it's difficult to teach and difficult to grasp that you could stop your inhalation or exhalation and there's no breath. And any doctor will tell you that breath has to go through the vocals to make the vibrate, except we don't do that. I told this doctor, I remember where I was talking about a while ago, I said, I brought you so many students, so many people from that institute in Boston and I wanted to get an appraisal of you before I started teaching them. And uh, so I've never brought you, I've brought you students now for many years now, probably how long? I don't know, 10 years. I said, uh, but I've never come as a patient, have I? He said, no, that's interesting. I've never been a patient. Why aren't you, uh, why, why, what do you, I said, I'm telling you that that's what I told him. We, you know, I, I sing like I'm underwater. I don't want to make any bubbles. He just about had a fit. He said, well, whatever works for you. I said, well, I'm still singing, and uh, I don't need to go to the throat doctor except to bring them someone, right? <laughs> so uh, it doesn't mean I'm any smarter than anybody else. It just means I'm copying what people told me who, that were great singers. I mean, I sang for UC Brilli, and all he was this, oh, 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 oh. I said, well, 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 what about your breathing? He said, well, you know, you do this, oh, 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 no breath, no, 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 nothing. Talk about spontaneous. I was a fantastic techni technical singer. The best I ever heard among the men. But then you had a, a close, a close second would be Richard Tucker, who was a fantastic singer too. But he was a breath stopper. He stops his breath here. He went, pa, ah, no. That requires a, a pa, 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 ah, 
or cause your breath to stop. The one I'm talking about does not. All you do is stop breathing. If you're breathing in, you stop breathing in. If you're breathing out, you stop breathing out. And you're caught in the middle somewhere. And believe me, it lasts a lifetime. If you learn how to do it. And I was like, he goes, I got the teacher who was a student of, a, of one of Lamperti's great stars. Her name was, uh, was uh, Fostrum. Alma Fostrum, and she was at the St. Petersburg Conservatory when my teacher went there when she was 16 in 1912. Went there in 1912. So there was still a lot of, uh, a lot of information about the Belcanto style still there. And, uh, and then before that, my God, we, we don't even know how far back this goes. We don't know where, who did it first and where it started. But the idea is you stand there and you go, oh, I neither breathe nor did I exhale. I'm breathing, I mean, in. I didn't breathe in and I didn't breathe out. I just stood still and did nothing. Oh, 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 oh I'm doing nothing. Oh, 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 I'm not breathing. Oh, 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 no nasality whatsoever. See? If I have to sing French, I would stop my breath. I've forgotten it, boy. I've only sung it, you know, over 500 times. I've forgotten it. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's what I'm doing to be 85. You can still sing, but you can't remember the words anymore. I, I think, I think I'm... La fleur que tu m'avais jeté dans ma prison, mais t'es resté. La fleur que tu m'avais jeté dans ma prison, dans ma prison, mais t'es resté. Flétrie, sage, cette fleur. In other words, there's no nays in it. No nays in it. No nose in it. All right, so I hope this will then give somebody some ideas. At least you can experiment with it a little bit. How do I sing if I cannot start the tone with air. Well, I can start air, but I have to stop exhaling. I can start the air by inhaling, but I have to stop inhaling. We have a lot of breath stops we can use. I can go all those breath stops I don't need if I don't uh, send out air and then cut it off. And it's confusing. I understand it's confusing because these work. So it's like the hiccup. They all work. This that the one we want to do is where we don't have to do any of that. I really think that I last longer than some of the guys that I admire, some fantastic singer, but they used the different cutoff methods, and I think it beats up the vocal cords after uh, many, many years. And uh, I hear, you know, for instance, uh, 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 someone like Frank Rigrelli had a fantastic career for 25 or 30 years, and all of a sudden he damaged his voice. How is that possible? The guy knew so much about about how to sing well, see? Well, apparently it used to use something called behind the glottal stroke. So when he did that, there was no stop. He was stopping his, his inhalation. Now, when you right now on the inhalation, uh, singers have a tendency to do a glottal stroke. And you must be careful you don't go, ah, don't let it start there, go, but the out should be the same. Okay, I think that's enough demonstrating. And I hope that helps somebody, at least you think about it. I'd love to save your throat if I can help anybody who's having this chronic throat problem. And, uh, you know, some always feeling dried out, or always feeling allergic or something like that. Just stop. Don't let air 
move when you start to sing and the doctors will tell you it's not possible. Well, I can prove to you it is possible, okay? <laughs> there, there, there are a couple where you get the candle flame and you sing and you don't move it. One, that's one of the basic vocalists in the whole history of singing. So now we use, uh, we use tissue. And I can do it, I can show you on tissue. Here's a tissue right here. And you can see this. I go, how are you never go down down? You can understand any word I'm saying. And my paper does not move. I can go in or out and the paper doesn't move. No, is in, is out. And the paper doesn't move. And they used to use the candle flame in the old days, and uh, I started with candle flames, and they're sort of a pain in the rear because they really are, you know, burn your nose and they burn your lips, and then they go out. If you blow air, they blow out. You have to relight. This thing is wonderful, and it's your best friend after a while. So uh, you can always, always test yourself anytime you want to. Test yourself for nasality. La! And test yourself for leaking. La! You got those two under control. You're ready for the big time. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye and good luck to everybody. Bye.